So a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to North Hobart Oval for what will be a very, very entertaining game. So far today, we've had the under 13 A1 and under 14 A1 in the first game. It was Claremont who came away with a hard fought victory. In the last one, it was a thriller with uh, Lindisfarne getting over the top of North Hobart. And now we are into the under 15 division where it is the undefeated Clarence taking on Lauderdale. Two very different ways that the teams came into this grand final. It was Clarence who have taken all before them this season. And it was Lauderdale who had a very, very uh, hard fought game against Sandy Bay in their preliminary final to make it to this grand final. So coach uh, Josh Williams will be absolutely thrilled. The young fellow assistant teacher, he's doing his level two course. He's a quality young fella. And of course, Clarence under the tutelage of Matt Cat Gapen. Uh, they've been very, very well drilled and they'll be very much looking forward uh, to this particular grand final. As we see the players are going through the warm up They'll then come in for the Australian National Anthem and then we'll get underway. So we'll take our first break here for the afternoon and be back for the National Anthem in just a few moments. journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets, and pioneered new ways of doing things. 
so we could craft the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. At the heart of Cripps are baking and community. We're proud of where we've come from, but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Cripps, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. In today's world of self-service, it's nice to know that there's still a place where you can sit back and relax. Bennett's Driveway Service, now at Snug, Lerner Valley and Sandy Bay. For more than 40 years, Bennett's Petroleum has been there for all Tasmanians. journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets and pioneered new ways of doing things so we could craft the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. At the heart of Cripps are baking and community. We're proud of where we've come from but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Cripps, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. today's world of self-service, it's nice to know that there's still a place where you can sit back and relax. Bennett's Driveway Service, now at Snug, Lerner Valley and Sandy Bay. For more than 40 years, Bennett's Petroleum has been there for all Tasmanians. journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets and pioneered new ways of doing things so we could craft the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. At the heart of Cripps are baking and community. We're proud of where we've come from but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Cripps, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please be upstanding for the Australian National Anthem.
there we have it uh, if that doesn't get you up and about nothing will there was the Australian national anthem prying to prior to the start of this game and I tell you when the clamor went nice and close there's a a couple of uh, haircuts there that only their dear old mums could love uh, there's Lots of different uh, vagaries of the uh, toop there, but it is Andrew Silver Fox Hopwood in the main commentary tower as we look down from our beautiful position to see the Lauderdale Football Club go about their business before this big game. And I, it is a great joy that I welcome to the coverage the coach of the Sandy Bay under-15 uh, team, Troy Bennett. Welcome on board, Troy. Thank you very much, Bobby. Glad to be watching this game from up above here. It, uh, now, mate, you've had a good look at these two teams from very close perspective. Who is it that, that you fancy and why? Clarence have been undefeated once in six years. In a grand final here two years ago, they were, under, they were defeated. Um, skillful side, running side, Clarence, Clarence by a bit. Clarence by a bit. Well, there is one particular view and, and an on-field perspective. Uh, we're very, very fortunate to be joined by the under-15 reigning 2021 Beakley Award winner, Tommy Bennett. Tom, uh, from that playing perspective, uh, what is it from your view who you think might uh, get the ascendancy in this big game? Uh, well, Clarence are a great pressure team, great skill team, and they can really convert when it goes inside 50, but Lauderdale a very tough team, so I think whoever wants it from the first bounce, but I back Clarence today. Well, we can see there coach Josh Williams. So that said, Troy, let me take you inside the coach's mind uh, of a team that is coming up against it. What will you be telling your charges before the first bounce? OK, if we played today, it was all about uh, the first 10 minutes, contested football, tough football, pressure, pressure, pressure. That's the only way you're going to stop this bounce side. Well, that's an interesting perspective, and I'm sure you would be the same there, Tom. So it is, Fave, and if you are wondering the change of Guernsey, so Clarence with their traditional white and red, but that is their stay chatty Guernsey, and, of course, Lauderdale with the uh, red and black hoops as the uh, Ruckman are just kicking each other in the eye, ready for this first bounce. Absolutely magnificent conditions here. Ladies and gentlemen, not a breath of wind at the spiritual home of football, the great amphitheatre. A really good crowd has built up for today. We've had a couple of crackers. And here is the third. It's the, uh, the day that I have to say, Troy, that I used to love as a dad. I was lucky enough to be here on many an occasion. So it's a, it's a gala day here on Grand Final Fantastic Day. Fantastic day. Certainly is, and up they go. Uh, it was Lauderdale's Jackie Bailey who, jacked, who jumped over the top of the particular time. Clarence take clean possession. They go towards that half forward flank. Well picked up there by Lauderdale. Hot ball in the centre. Picked it up and goes inside. And the smother was very, very nicely done by Henderson. And that's the sort of pressure that you spoke about, uh, Troy, isn't it? Yeah, pressure, um, smothers, tackles, chase downs, blocks. It all, it all adds up to um, putting um, Clarence under um, a lot of um, doubt. The doubt, I think that is the word, is that ball goes out. I think when you're in this position, Tom, you would say to your charges, let's just stay in the game. It's not a defensive way to say about it. Just stay in longer and longer. You build confidence and, and also ask a few questions of your opposition. Yeah, well, you've got to be disciplined from the first bounce. You can't be phasing off in your head, uh, but you've got to make sure you don't play too defensive and don't go after the football, but you've got to also make sure you stay disciplined and stay on your man. Well, there we are. It is Clarence who are coming inside as they get the first uh, shot away. That was uh, well picked up by uh, Maxi Gapen, who is a very effective and clean, normally below his knees, and that's the sort of thing they'll have to watch. And we can see there in that early stage as Troy, the midfield two-way running, they ran in numbers then and looked to spread quickly, didn't they? Yeah, they Clarence players, they seem like they uh, do marathons through the summer. They're a very fit side and they um, go from offence to attack, really, um, defence to attack very quickly. OK, so they do go inside. They've got a, just a couple of metres there. Williams caught behind and it is Clarence now. So they're 45 out. They'll put that into a very dangerous position. That's a lovely kick as we saw Ethan Williamson on that lead. A committed lead too as well came out and showed good hands and now will go back and have a shot on goal. It's the first deliberate shot now and it is for Clarence. 
Ethan Williamson will be a big part of this game and a big part of Clarence's forward line. He's a great contested mark and leads very well out of the goal square. Oh, and just there, Tommy, just pushed that one slightly over. That was a very good lead, as you just alluded to. He uh, is a man that uh, you want the ball in your hands if uh, you are going down that way. So already we can see it has uh, been down inside that 50 all the game so far for Clarence. And that's the second time. There is no breeze there, ladies and gentlemen. I guess uh, Lauderdale didn't want to bring it down the corridor, so they go back inside. And that's very, very loose checking as that kick came in. And that's just not what you would want, Troy Bennett, if you were the coach of the Lauderdale Football Club. No, you need uh, your players to be very disciplined and really have a strong mindset um, early in the game to, to be out of man up with a, with a, with a kick in like that from, from the forward 50. OK, so Oscar Sproul, who took that lovely mark, has uh, given Lauderdale an opportunity to take a big, deep breath here. It's almost uh, funny from a coaching perspective. Sometimes if all of a sudden the team gets a wriggle on, you'd, you'd love the opportunity to just call a timeout and just bring them back in and say, now listen, just settle again. Not that, but this is AFL and there's no time for that. That's the sort of tackle that you need. So although it has been all Clarence, they haven't damaged on the scoreboard. They have got to the two behinds, but uh, they have got plenty of the ball. You can see they are doing what they want at will. So that is a big kick down forward. And I think already I am noticing, uh, Troy Bennett, I'll go to you just first as a coaching perspective. That is a big mismatch. Oh, it's a big mess, mismatch for the, uh, Ethan Williamson. Yeah, you need you need someone six foot one yep. and, and fast to be on Ethan. I think he kicked over 50 goals this year in, in the league. So he's a, he's a forward line magician. OK, so Ethan Williamson coming back now. Lines that one up. That looks a lot better off the boot. And he knows he's kicked that one. That's gone from slightly left to right and has put that one through. So a very, very bright start to the Clarence uh, Football Club as they got that one forward. And uh, Tom, these are certainly, it is very, very early. We are only four minutes in, but slightly danger signs for the Bombers. Yeah, well, that first goal was big for Clarence because that's a good settler for them. Mm. Uh, but you really feel like Lauderdale need to win this stoppage just to get a punch back as well. Absolutely. They really haven't got their dukes on the ball. But more concerning to me is they're playing a little bit wide mm. of their player. I, mm. I want to see a bit more physicality just to make sure that the opponent knows that they're playing. I'm not talking about dirty. I'm just saying you stand in front of your man and you tell him that you're here and you're committed to the contest. That now ball is in dispute. Clarence uh, leading towards it. There's no doubt about that. It was good play there by Cooney. He's overrun the ball now. Here is an opportunity for Lauderdale. They, oh, that's definitely a good opportunity. But leading forward was Anderson. He can't take it now. Comes back inside. Lauderdale for the first time, just getting their hands on the ball, but not being able to do too much with it was, uh, I think that was Creswell for Clarence, who saw that one over. And so now it will be another boundary throw in. With Clarence, they need to, um, they have very good disposal, but if Lauderdale want to like stay in the game, they've got to make sure they go out tougher. As Clarence, I would say, have a bit more skill and finesse. Yes. But Lord, need to win the rugged, hard, hard, tough game, win the pressure game. Well, I agree with you there. And that was Klein, who looked very nice from half back there for Lauderdale. But it comes back to Clarence as they go inside that 50. And they've got lots of different options. And here is one as uh, Sylvester picked that one up and just waltzes in towards the goals. And Harry Sylvester did a fantastic job of being at the right place at the right time. Disciplined play there, Troy. Yeah, look, um, <laughs> um, yeah, Clarence are fast, they're skillful. Harry Sylvester is a fast, fast athlete and uh, he uh, executes really well. And um, yeah, they, that's got to man up. They've got to get uh, man on man right now, right now counts. So if it's not now, then it's not going to happen. Well, absolutely. You know, you can come up with all the theory and your zone off and your structure. Yeah. But you just go out there and you look, there's a guy there in a Guernsey. Yeah. You just got to stand on him yeah. and stop him from getting the ball. So if you're doing that, that's half the done. And when it is there to be one, right, I'm going to put my head over the onion and grab it as well. So that was Daniel Cooney, who's been quite effective 
uh, small forward. He gets that handball out. Running back onto the ball is Richards. They certainly do have some options. And there is Cooney again. He quickly gets that handball out and as it goes into an area of danger. Clarence just seemed to be running at will at the moment. Lauderdale haven't laid any tackles as Cooney goes back. He goes onto his wrong side, which he did very, very nice. He gets another give and go as it comes out to Lee Song. Lee Song, long driving in towards the full forward area and running back doing a nice uh, spoil was Carter Roach and uh, he's one of the players Tom that I'll be looking for, Carter, Carter Roach who's had a pretty good season and I, and I want him to do some of that hard bullocking work. Yeah well he's a great intercept mark and sits in that hole really well in the opposition's forward line mm -hmm. so he's going to be a big part of repelling a lot of Clarence's inside 50 so he's going to need a big game today for Lauderdale to be very competitive. Well this is much better from Lauderdale. Just slowed that one down and went in for that mark as Oates has taken that mark. Oates looks further afield towards Goss. Goss just slipping over at the inopportune moment. Well, oh, big strong cackle from Anderson. The only thing that was problematic there that the opposition didn't have the football. So that is one of the easiest free kicks you'll see of the day. That going to uh, Clarence's Blake Harper. Harper goes to try and keep that one in. Just uh, finesse that one out onto the side. So with eight and a half minutes gone in the 2021 under 15 a1 grand final it is clarence with uh, those two goals they are 2 4 16 leading lauderdale yet to score they've had the ball basically in their half so it would be a fantastic uh, Philip and confidence booster if the, the bombers can get their hands on the footy and get it over the centre That'll give them some confidence and they'll build from that. A little bit scrappy, but they're gaining valuable meterage. Here's a big chance as it comes out to Soros. Big up and under. That's gone about uh, 40 metres up and straight down. Oh, here's an opportunity. Comes over the back. Here's a question that's asked of uh, Lauderdale to the bend. That's the tackle that they want to go as Forrest comes out. Forrest is hard back in at it again. Scrappy old kick that's uh, found the line almost, keeping it in. Well played by uh, Lauderdale to get there. They're in front and all but could take a mark. It's spilt that particular time by Forrest. He is beset upon by Giles, but it's now going to be a ball up. Troy, that is much better football from the Bombers. Yeah, a lot better. They wanted the ball. They, uh, they um, look like they got a little bit of confidence there in the last uh, 30 seconds to a minute. Yep. So that's perfect. OK, so Forrest, who... Spilt that mark, but by gee, he did a good job on his second effort. So he goes in, long, raking kick. Can anyone take a mark? Maybe a front and centre. Fair bit of uh, pressure being applied. Oh, good tackle by their small forwards. And again, mm. that's what they need to do. It comes back into an area of danger. Can they get it? They can do. Scrubby old kick, but it is in the right area if you are a bomber supporter. Clarence under a little bit of pressure. Forrest dispossessed now and Clarence standing very very tall but a nice mark is taken there by Bailey Bailey good cut of a lad drives it long direct strong one-handed go up there couldn't quite bring it down was uh, Bennett he is dispossessed this is much better from the Bombers as they screw that ball around back towards the goal and through for the minor score but much better signs here Tom from uh, a settling Lauderdale Football Club. Yeah, well, this, this kick out here will be good to see because Lauderdale are missing one of their uh, really cut key players in Riley Banks. Yes. And he's a very good intercept mark, gets up very high. And here's where, well, Shane's done it for them, but here's where they need him to take a big mark to get it back into the forward line. OK, so again, that kick has gone just high up and under. And uh, maybe... They might have to change the way they get through because as soon as the ball hits the ground, they're being able to just sort of mop that one up and take it out as, again, it's coming back in. So much better signs for Lauderdale and uh, playing that sweeper roll down back was heard for Clarence, but it's now coming back towards the centre. No time to stop in play. Oh, that's a great tackle. Well played by Williams. Not rewarded for his efforts. Deemed that the ball came out. Slipping over, as you can hear there. Play on it is the call. Handball. Clarence play pick on. it up. Come back inside. Another good effort by Carter Roach. Gets it towards the outside. That's his danger as Johnson goes forward. Arching the back. And there is a throw. That's really, really good pressure there from Liam Lagos in the deep 
defensive uh, position and Troy as a coach you would be much more appreciative of your defenders to play that style of play. Man on man against Clarence, it's another way tackles, and that you can see what's happening now. The quick game slow down for Clarence, and yep. Lord will win it. Okay, so ball coming back in. We are 12 minutes into this grand Play final. On. It took a little bit of time Play for on, the Bombers to settle. Play on. Now it is in dispute. Hard uh, in and under, well picked up by Lee Song. Lee Song flicks that ball back over to Giles. Giles goes inside and a nice mark and quickly played on there was Harper. Harper, oh, maybe I, I, I like that uh, as well, Tom, to take the game on, but maybe, uh, maybe I'm a little bit old fashioned when you're 30 metres out. I reckon I'm gonna just take my time and go back Stand and have back. a look at the big sticks. Yeah, well, Blake is a quality kick, so he should have backed himself there, probably went back off the mark, but it's still good to see that Clarence are trying to pay with Play pace on. to beat uh, Lauderdale's pressure. Yeah, but I agree. The game has slowed down now, no. so Clarence needed to take that opportunity and go back and put that through the sticks. Yeah, so it will be played, I think, uh, from a Clarence perspective, they want the, the game to be played at breakneck speed, just keep running, and they're prepared to run all day, flick the ball around, uh, look laterally. Whereas Lauderdale, I think, and it's just a difference in, in approach, I think they'll be happier if it's at a slower pace, Troy. Definitely slower pace for, uh, for Lauderdale. They, um, they kick down the line a little bit more. They do switch pretty well, yep. um, but they need to slow the game down again, make it contested, make yep. it pressure. And um, they have done that in the last five minutes, which is really good to see. Oh, I agree. So now that ball comes in and well played here by Lauderdale, and it is Oates. Fantastic that we've got all the insight sometimes coming from the umpire there. Now you can see it is on the wing. We've got nearly 14 minutes gone, and Clarence coming back into their attacking area. Sproul leads out, but uh, quickly picks up Dispossessed. A lovely bump. That's a good spoil. Nice hey, play by Lauderdale. No prior indeed. I thought might have been slightly uh, held a little bit too Temple. long, but uh, deemed to be playing on. Lauderdale going back in with a lot more intent now as Oates and also Newell bring their Clarence opposition to the ground. And it's going to be a free kick uh, held too long. As we see here on the Mood Food replay, just trying to push their way out. And a great tackle there by Williams. I think a big thing for Clarence yeah. is they do this very well. They play a good team game, but uh, not being too selfish and making sure they really share it around. Uh, we'll get around Lauderdale's pressure. Yep, no indeed. So now I think that was deemed to be uh, downfield and it will be Clarence. I think that is Johnson. You can just see, got to go from behind the mark. Very, very keen to get that moving again. So Riley Johnson's been told to go back. Again, I'll look at the space that's uh, been afforded to the Clarence forwards. Gee whiz, that's uh, far too much acreage for to give a player of this skill, Troy Bennett. No, you don't leave Fletcher Richards alone in the Ford 50, that's for sure. So. Uh, I'm not sure what, what broke down there for Lord That cannot happen in the grand final. You can see there Hamish Klein was on the mark and he turned around with all but a bit of uh, disdain on his face when he turned around and said, well, I'm going to have to mark on. Where are you, fellas? Mm -hmm. Come up, come up. But anyway, it is Richards now. You can see what is in front of him. He's going to kick that from that 48. Beautiful, long-raking kick. He had plenty of distance in that uh, shoe. But it's just pushed it to the outside. So here is the opportunity for Lauderdale to bring that ball quickly. They're going to try and get it out of their defensive area as there's been another whistle. And that free kick is going to McGann. McGann for Clarence comes back inside. Oh, that's a good lead and mark. Just a wonderful vertical leap taken by uh, Blake Harper. And as you said a few minutes ago, Tom, this young fella is a quality player. Yeah, well, Blake's um, done well to settle this down as if he kicks this here, this has really undone a lot of Lauderdale's good pressure work. Mm -hmm. But um, it'd be really good for Clarence to put this to the sticks and really take control over the game. So it is. Blake Harper, the captain of the Clarence Football Club, comes in, drives it in towards the goals. It's a little bit offline, but oh my goodness, there standing tall is Sproul. Sproul wastes no time and he spins around and drives that one through for a goal. And uh, Clarence are certainly on the march here in the under 15 grand final.
as we see from a strong mark coming in had his eyes just transfixed on the old footy saw that there was no one standing on the mark so took advantage of it as we check the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard which reads Clarence 3-6-24 to the Bombers one behind and we saw Troy on the mood food replay there what a good job he did after taking that mark to quickly come around and open up the angle oh that was a uh, perfect perfect footwork from Oscar Sproul okay so the ball has uh, gone back in towards that forward line of oh, it and uh, it is now out of bounds so uh, no just through for the minor score so the ball's coming back into Carter Roach who this time has heard on some caution just to take that time Carter Roach Lord oh, kick. Sorry. Lord I can't get too down about this quarter as I do think that is the scoring end this, the end Clarence of the ball at but if they if they stop another few goals coming in from Clarence they could maybe get a few in the next quarter gee I just uh, love the the work of a very optimistic young man with a bright big future in front and uh, I think we need to send you down to that Lauderdale huddle there Tom there's no doubt about that you're giving all the Lauderdale faithful as we're getting lots of messages from them down there in that beautiful breachside suburb they're all watching down there hoping that their boys will uh, come good but I'm sure they're very proud of them to making the final but they are in it and they are in it up to their ears because they've got uh, a 50-50 chance from here on in as Carter Roach uh, takes that ball close in fact over the boundary line so another throw in as you just said Tom they just need to hold on and wait for that quick break and the umpire I think is just talking about that with the anti-density anti rules I think wouldn't it Tom? Yep so you have to have two back in your forward 50 or your back 50 I think yes um, so they, they probably got a warning for that one next time they might get pinned okay it is Clarence getting it back to dangerous area well done by Lauderdale quickly getting it on to his boot uh, boot was Newell trying to find the safety of the boundary as uh, Bailey Zandaz takes that one over and again it will be another boundary throw in and it is inside the 50 arc of Clarence we did expect Clarence to come out hard we were I guess from the purists of football would love to see Lauderdale stand up they're doing a great job so far they've had the ball down there had a couple of really wonderful opportunities but uh, hats off to the defensive work there of Clarence as they are really mounting another assault on what is the scoring end you heard from the reigning 2021 Beakley medalist Tom Bennett tell us that it uh, certainly has been the scoring end, Tom, so far in the first two games. Yeah, well, from watching the under-13s, there's a side, and the under-14s, there was definitely more um, goal scored at that that, uh, that city end. Yep. And I think if Lauderdale don't get two down themselves, they could definitely sneak a few in this next quarter, but they've got to win it through the middle, Bobby. I agree with you there. So as we just check Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, it reads Clarence 3 7 25 to Lauderdale, one behind. For Clarence, it is Sylvester, Williamson, and Sproul for the goal scorers. And uh, they've had plenty of really good players. And so for mine, Troy, it, it is, I think, uh, Coach Gapen would be absolutely thrilled with that start because although being favoured, there is still a little bit of pressure on you when you come into this game and you, you mm. hope that your team settles and that would arrest any of that nervous tension. Oh, look, uh, Matthew Gapen, is, is, um, he gets, uh, he's a very energetic person, so he uh, gets excited, so he would be um, he would be calm, a lot more calm after seeing that quarter, and as I said before, they lost the grand final two years ago, unexpectedly, and you know, I don't think he's forgotten that. No, I'm sure he hasn't forgotten that, as we have, and that, that was a fantastic performance there by North Hobart. So it is all in front of the Lauderdale Football Club. Can they come back or are Clarence going to go on their merry way as the undefeated team? Don't you go too far. We're going to take a break here and back with all the action in the second quarter very shortly. We've journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets and pioneered new ways of doing things so we could craft the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. At the heart of Cripps are baking and community. 
We're proud of where we've come from, but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Crips, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. In today's world of self-service, it's nice to know that there's still a place where you can sit back and relax. Bennett's Driveway Service, now at Snug, Lerner Valley and Sandy Bay. For more than 40 years, Bennett's Petroleum has been there for all Tasmanians. journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets and pioneered new ways of doing things so we could craft the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. At the heart of Crips are baking and community. We're proud of where we've come from but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Crips, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. Welcome back here to Lauderdale Oval. Uh, Lauderdale Oval. Uh, it is, of course, North Hobart Oval. It is Lauderdale v Clarence. Uh, we were just talking off camera. Troy and I was asking about my lineage, and I was telling he asked me if I was born at Lauderdale. So it uh, it stuck true. I'm uh, a Cremorne man now. Troy, beautiful part of the world, but I was a Rosney Point boy. So we are so very, very fortunate. Uh, I say this gratitude at the postcode that I was born into where uh, Tasmania is the rest of the planet is doing a tough on there not a bad spot to be no, this is the best spot in the world isn't it it is and we're here on grand final day and not oh that's a big strong power mark by Sproul he's come out he's gone the short pass oh, well done by Williams who just got in the hole and that's the sort of thing you were talking about Tom before isn't it someone prepared to fill that hole when that ball comes in. Yeah, well, Clarence are most likely beat you off the leaders. They're a really quick, explosive team and have great setups. But if you can have someone sit back in that hole, uh, you can really avoid a lot of those easy chip up quick kicks to get an easier kick. Yeah, it was good play there by Williams, who is going again sometimes as a backman, whether to stay on your man or leave it, as he's going to be under some mounting pressure as uh, Clarence to spoil each other but that was only because of the great intent that they had to want the football that much and I'm sure as a coach Troy you wouldn't mind occasion if there's a couple of players run into each other like because they really wanted the onion didn't they they did they did very competitive Clarence team they they feed off each other um, to get a game you've got to be competitive so now it is Lauderdale who just going to bring this one back in. Just now taking their time. Go the short option. Oh, that's very dangerous. And Ethan Williamson just put up the big right duke. He's got a good cut of the lad. And now he is going back here, as we see on the uh, Mood Food replay. Just that short pass has just come unstuck. And uh, here he goes. Williamson comes in. He's just pushed that one a little bit to the right. And uh, 
Lauderdale lived to fight another day, but uh, that was a very, well, we'll call it a brave kick coming up through the, the centre there. So let's see how they set up for this one. So Clarence have uh, slipped away with 3-9. And the one thing that's happening out there, Troy, is the inaccuracy for Clarence, although they are sort of dominating, is still breathing life in this game. Uh, look, Clarence averaged about 40, uh, 35 uh, scoring opportunities per game scoring shots and a lot of those are points during the Rossi game so yes that's as well mm. <laughs> they are <laughs> kicking points today <laughs> there is another one as we have a look at the Brighton's best bakehouse score which sees Clarence 310 28 to Lauderdale that one behind you almost don't want to imagine what what the score would look like if Clarence had kicked straight off the set shots but yeah. Lauderdale are going to need a they need to take a, take an opportunity out of this knowing that the game's still in reach they need to get into their forward 50 to give their forwards a chance. I agree with you there, Tom. They did uh, do very well in uh, in patches in that first quarter when they did get the ball in there and just didn't quite have the finesse to uh, get it over the line. But just keep bullocking, just keep at it. Persistence is the key word I would use for them. So it is a boundary throw in here at North Hobart Oval. Absolute cracker of a day. Uh, just a bit of light cloud coverage now, but perfect conditions to be playing football as Lauderdale do take possession. They work their way out there looking for uh, Ether, who gets a quick kick on the, the left side of his body. Here is uh, Beakley for Lauderdale. Oh, that's a good tackle there by Beakley. Austin Beakley. Didn't get the hand to it. You can see there is the big tall forward has going to have a shot for goal. That's your line. Stand. There it is now. That was a good tackle. Stay there, out. Stay out. Yeah, it was a great tackle. Good pressure. And that's exactly what Lord are going to need to uh, get a score on the board and have more opportunity in this game. So Beakley, deliberate shot on goal. Goes towards the sticks. Oh, and he's put it through. The big man from Lauderdale, Austin Beakley. His dear old granddad, Tony Beakley, will be here. He'll be absolutely cock-a-hoop at the big fella. Of course, uh, Austin has made his way over from uh, Melbourne. His dad uh, was in the Navy. And uh, here he is representing the Lauderdale Football Club. Tommy, that was a kick from the top shelf. Oh, that was a ripper goal. And against us, he kicked uh, a few really vital goals. So he's he's really making a name for himself, becoming a key goal kicker for the Auditor. Gee whiz, Troy. You, you loved it to see when they got the goal, the celebration to get round each other. That was perfect. Now they need to keep this energy up. Yep. Yeah, good energy out there. So well done by Lauderdale. That's all it takes. Just get it inside that 50. And someone like uh, Beakley can seize on that opportunity. So... Clarence, we know they're a crackerjack team. They're a ripper club and well-drilled team. Now the question's been asked. Let's see if they can respond as there is young Williams tries to get that kick out. Here goes Clarence and juggling the mark, decide to play on. Now they've got it again is Sproul. And Sproul has played that one on and unfortunately for a Clarence perspective has missed that shot again. I am just a very old-fashioned sort of guy that uh, when I'm that far out from goal, I'm just going to settle steady and uh, go back for the set shot. That Goes was, Clarence. Sorry, Tom. Yes. That was great positioning by uh, 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 who was it? Uh, Oscar Sprouse. So, yes, it was. Uh, he just really had to go back and give his forwards a chance to lead up at him if it was too far out. I guess the, the, the thing... Conversely, he, he did juggle it, so maybe as he was juggling, he thought to himself, oh, crikey, I've yep. got the momentum going forward, so why not keep going? What would an old fox, silver fox, know up in the commentary tower anyway, as that is the boundary throw in. Well played there by Jack Bailey for Lauderdale, but nicely roved by Clarence. Big, strong tackle being applied there by Carter Roach. Clarence seemed to have all the numbers, plenty of running players. Good uh, work here by the Bombers as they come back inside. That's a very bold handball. Taps it over. Oh, lucky as a fortune. It's a bit of a give and go now as they barrel that one inside the 50. It's wide of Beakley, who again looks to be their main target, and it's gone out of bounds. But Thanks, a lot guys. more promising you, at Lord the Lord moment, Lord. Troy, for the Lauderdale football the they're only They're only three, three and a half goals down, so anything's possible.
Absolutely so, it is Beakley well. who goes up for that tap. Well rode by Clarence. That is Massey at the back. He gives the give and go, and now they've got an opportunity to clear that ball. And that mark is taken by Harper. Harper, gee whiz, that's a very, very bold kick, an accurate kick. Picking it up now is Clarence coming down through the middle, and uh, Williams comes in and gets the spoil for Lauderdale. Good hard tackle there by Cody uh, Whiten, and uh, it sees that ball go over the line. So what have we got? Uh, seven and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. It is the uh, under-15 grand final here at North Hobart Oval. Clarence of the Lauderdale, the arch rivalry from the Eastern Shore. Lauderdale on the ball, beaten to it that time by Lee Song for Clarence. And here they go again, going towards that and playing in front, taking a good mark are uh, the ruse. And it is Richards. Richards just gets it back to that area of absolute danger if you are a back when you don't like the ball to be pushed there here is williams who tries to pull his man in before they have that shot for goal and again it is offline and clarence are certainly peppering the goals as we check the brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard which shows clarence three goals 12 30 lauderdale 117 so they are still leaving the door ajar, Troy Bennett. They sure are. Three goals or three and a half goals. And um, I'd be happy if I was the coach of Lauderdale, but I would be a bit frustrated if I was the coach of Clarence right now. Yeah, all of a sudden you could have put the game beyond doubt, mm -hmm. even in the second quarter. But Lauderdale, to their great credit, are applying some pressure as that was a 50-50 kick at best. And Clarence read that very nicely. But good play. Oh, there by uh, Lauderdale chipping in. I think it was Rondez who unfortunately couldn't quite take that mark again. They are at that bottom of the pack as the numbers try and come to help. Excellent work by uh, Henderson. He's dispossessed. It is Valdez for Clarence. And there is Hurd with that uh, distinct, with distinctive free-flowing mullet. I tell you what, that's a cracker of uh, a, a mullet there, Tom. Oh, you've got to get around that mullet. Um... I think a lot of people who cut that and they would go for the mullet would spy to be um, or have a mullet like that. So it's definitely a, um, yeah, it's a cracker. so cold mullet. Yeah, well, it's a beauty. I know uh, Harvey's just probably doing it to his dear old dad because he's follically challenged. So while he says, well, I've got the hair, I'm going to have a crack at growing it as it comes down to Cooney. And Cooney now just uh, wanders into the goals and puts that one through, does Daniel Cooney for Clarence. And so that was beautifully robed and well worked, as we'll have a look at that on the Mood Foo replay, Troy. That was champagne football yeah. from the Roos. That was champagne. It was the perfect forward pockets play. Yeah, run and carry, handball received, beautiful play. It was Cooney there who had the sense he could see. He got on his bike as soon as that mm. ball came towards the forward, then he drew mm. the handball. And he was and relaxed. just mm. got through the gate and away he went. So we'll check that Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard and it shows that Clarence a 4-12-36, Lauderdale 1-1-7. One, one, Clarence taking a possession now. And that's a good mark down deep in defence uh, taken by Newell. Newell arches the back, goes out towards that Ride Street side. Again, slow build up and it's Henderson who takes that one. This time he goes short in towards Williams. Williams. Few good possessions here from Lauderdale. They just need to make sure they do something with their kicks as they start getting into the money kick here. Yeah, it certainly was. Sorry, was the, you could hear the size of the old veterans over the back. Uh, that was a one on three, but it was just right, uh, perfectly balanced kick. And for all their good work of having uh, four or five possessions, look at when Clarence get the ball, how fast they break. There's Creswell. He just goes back in towards Cooney, who is front and centre this time. He comes back. He might be on the receiving end. It's uh, Clarence who have all the numbers as they scoop that one up. They kick it back towards the goal. And the power forwards are starting to have a party now. And that was beautifully picked up. I'm not sure um, if that was... Williamson or Fletcher. Was it Fletcher was Fletcher. Mm, Fletcher left for kick. Yeah. Nice, nice goal. It was from Richards. We see here on the Mood Food replay when it came back inside 
as soon as that ball hit the ground, Troy, look at all the running options that Clarence had. Oh, look, like I said, uh, they, they are a quality team right through to 22 players, and it's a very competitive team, so they, they feed off each other. Yeah, that's the, that's the balance, I think, in any sporting team. It's the strength of maybe those supposed lower numbers, and, and what you just alluded to is Clarence are very, very even across the board. Mm. They've got some cracker players. Here is Blake Harper who breaks out, but nice, strong mark by uh, Carter Roach. Carter doing well sitting in that hole now. He's starting to get a bit of rhythm going. He's taken a few intercept marks. Just, mm. They need to get it past the halfway mark, Lord Al, and they give um, Austin Beakley a chance down forward. They might get another score on the ball. I agree with you there. It's just this one here. They're all but with these quick hands and the, uh, got the players on the outside who are reading the ball well and a strong mark taken, taken by Lagos as he goes back now looking for options and you can see the the gut running that uh, you mentioned Troy is by the Clarence boys there they're not stagnant at all they're shutting down all the exit options for Lauderdale so quickly yeah you just when you get a, a free kick or mark across the half back against Clarence you've got to run and gun there's no other way to get through and you have to run and gun and, and, and get through their defences and break it down okay so it was Harper who's really starting to come into his own who picked that one up but didn't uh, get rid of the ball properly so Lauderdale again have an opportunity to clear this ball as they come out to the expanses of the North Hobart Oval good punch it's going to come back Clarence just dropping back in here and far too much uh, space is afforded to Harper who sees the young fellow down there in Daniel Cooney who got that last goal so Cooney now is uh, going back, and we know he's very effective on the running side of things to kick goal. Let's have a look at his set shot prowess. Cooney just opens it up slightly and uh, goes back uh, with no trouble at all, with uh, great aplomb, and puts that one through for his second goal. And Clarence have got a stranglehold on this cup as we see here on the mood food replay Troy I have no idea how this young fella had uh, so much uh, space afforded to him but uh, yeah they really need to tighten up to the bombers yeah look there's a lot of uh, the new school is to, to do a bit more zone work through the half back line and the full back line but against Clarence you cannot zone mm. you must man up yeah I, I there comes a time, and, uh, and sadly, as a Carlton supporter, I've watched far too many goals get scored on uh, my team mm. in a row. Mm. I, I am of an old school. Sometimes you can have plan A, and you think you back your players to go in your system, but when it's not working, you, you just got to you get on someone. You've got to get, get on the play, and you've got to risk, uh, course, get, get pressure. There's no other way. There is no other way. We were very fortunate to have one of the preeminent junior coaches going around Troy Bennett we thank him for his time and of course talking of uh, Rolls Royce we've got Tom Bennett the reigning Beakley medalist as well with me up here in the tower so it's just an old fossil amongst some quality there is no doubt about that as here go Lauderdale they are trying to hold up Williams who I've actually liked his game so far he's been very stoic but that ball's going to come back here as Creswell goes in it comes over the back here is uh, Cooney again he's causing a little bit of danger as soon as that ball hits the ground very creative and knowledgeable footballer and it will be another stoppage here uh, which is deep into the Clarence's goals good tap out looking for a quick flick as it goes in there just offline and Clarence have uh, scored that one behind and they now move on to 6-13-49 with uh, Lauderdale 1-1-7 one, one, so Carter Roach strong kick right out wide trying to find uh, Bennett can't bring it in but I tell you what that's fantastic work by Bennett you can see him really fighting hard going back in on his all fours but it's Clarence who picked that up they spin around now through Creswell Creswell comes in maybe uh, just uh, spilt one they might be had comes back towards Gapen now the ball in dispute they are fighting very very hard over this one trying to punch it out they've been encouraged to move the ball on it has come out now it goes back in so Lauderdale they get their quick kick. 
comes out towards uh, Whittington who can't uh, take up there, just sweating on him this particular time. Good amounts of pressure in this particular stanza, but it is Clarence now who get that one. And as soon as they get it, they really, really run so hard. Benjamin Williams goes back showing, showing great deal of courage. Good uh, defensive work by Lauderdale's Lagos, as though now it comes out towards Gape and he is uh, dispossessed. And uh, it is Henderson now. There's a little uh, Margi Bargi behind, but we'll keep up with the, the football as it comes back now to Clarence who picked that one up. It is Massey, handball over. Come back inside, it's dangerous. Here is Williams, uh, went the handball. Maybe the quick kick could have been the order of the day. Coming back inside, in goes uh, Williams, but he's dispossessed. And unfortunately for Lauderdale, uh, that promising attacking move has gone missing as Heard. We know he'll always turn and run and go on to his uh, left boot. Another handball out, dispossessed. Oh, this is very promising for Lauderdale. Blake Harper goes towards the goals, end over end. And he's put that one through for another goal for the Ruse. And uh, very much danger signs. We look here on the Mood Food replay. We see him pick up that ball, straighten up. It was a funny old kick there, Troy. Instead of the traditional drop, drop punt, maybe he knows his kicking style because as soon as it hit the ground, it just picked up speed and ran straight through. Yeah, he sort of does know his kicking <laughs> style, but he has turned the ball over a little bit yeah. today, Blake. Um, but he's a fantastic, skillful kick um, most of the time. Absolutely so. Just check that uh, Brighton's Best Bakehouse scoreboard, and it's got Clarence 7 13 55 to Lauderdale, 1-1-7. One, one, Clarence really coming into their own now with their starting to get a bit of a rhythm on after that Lauderdale goal, maybe just woke them up a bit. So yes. moving the ball a lot quicker, getting the handball received game going as the scoreboard starting to really overwhelm Lauderdale now. I think that's uh, beautifully summed up. It is starting to get overwhelming when it uh, is at half time and it's 55 to seven, but uh, if you are a Lauderdale supporter, uh, I'm an old veteran and I can still recall in 1970 when the Blues were well down at half time and Barassi called his troops in and he asked them to handball and, yes. and it was Collingwood who cracked the champagne and they came out and they just took the game on. And of course, history tells us that Carlton wins, so but this is a different game, but there is still opportunity. They're not going to get opportunities by slowing the ball down. And, uh, the uh, play down like this. They need to get run through their back line, half back line through the midfield. Otherwise, it's going to be repealed half time after time. Absolutely. So, picking that one up was Zetha dispossessed. And that's terrific work there. Well played by uh, Ether. That's just what they want. Some stuff like that, Tom. Yep. That was a really, really good tackle, wasn't it? Yeah. Showing good intent. He really took he took on a, um, a really strong boy there in Joseph again after Joseph yeah, disposed of. Shane Henderson, but he really, really did well to put his body on the line there. So there is the half-time siren here at North Hobart, ladies and gentlemen, that sees uh, Clarence with a very, very uh, handy lead as we check Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. It is Clarence, 7-13-55 to Lauderdale, 1-1-7 one, one, for Clarence Cooney's got a couple and they've really shared it around with uh, Harper, Sylvester, Richard, Williamson and Sprout. They've got many, many options and Lauderdale, their goal scorer was Austin Beakley. So when Lauderdale went down and they actually spotted up their leading forwards, Beakley did look quite dangerous, Tom, didn't he? Yeah, he's uh, leading hard. He's really becoming a solid goal kicker. So he was their main target down forward, but they just couldn't get it into him enough, I don't think. That's right. Right, so Troy, for you, would you maybe try and move him just up the ground sort of slightly to try and see if he can cl clunk a couple around that centre-half forward mark? Yeah, look, he, um, I'd be putting him in the midfield. You, yep. you, 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 if your midfield is down, loses, you lose the football game. You yep. need to win the midfield, you need to get contested ball, you need to get run and carry through the half-back midfield. Otherwise, um, the ball boys won't go down in inside 50. Well, as Clarence go in to have their break, Lauderdale collect their thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to maybe put that kettle on and have a cup of tea and reflect on what might happen. But if you are Clarence, you'd be absolutely cock-a-hoot and say things are going very, very nicely. If you are Lauderdale, just try and evoke that uh, Carlton team of 1970 and see if they can come out and produce 
a, a big stirring comeback. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break and we look forward to bringing you the uh, second half very shortly. We've journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets, and pioneered new ways of doing things. So we could craft the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. At the heart of Cripps are baking and community. We're proud of where we've come from, but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Cripps, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. That, but this is AFL and there's no time for that. That's the sort of tackle that you need. So although it has been all Clarence, they haven't damaged on the scoreboard. They have got to the two behinds, but uh, they have got plenty of the ball. You can see they are doing what they want at will. So that is a big kick down forward. And I think already I am noticing, uh, Troy Bennett, I'll go to you just first as a coaching perspective. That is a big mismatch. Oh, it's a big mess, mismatch, Forty, uh, Ethan Williamson. Yeah, you need you need someone six foot one. Yep. And and fast to be an Ethan. I think he kicked over 50 goals this year in, in the league. So he's a he's a forward line magician. Okay. So Ethan Williamson coming back now lines that one up. That looks a lot better off the boot, and he knows he's kicked that one. That's gone from slightly left to right, and has put that one through. So a very, very bright start to the Waterdale, but it comes back to Clarence as they go inside that 50, and they've got lots of different options, and here is one as uh, Sylvester picked that one up and just waltzes in towards the goals, and Harry Sylvester did a fantastic job of being at the right place at the right time. It will be Clarence, I think that is Johnson. And just see, got to go from behind the mark. Very, very keen to get that moving again. So Riley Johnson's been told to go back. Again, I'll look at the space that's uh, been afforded to the Clarence forwards. Gee whiz, that's uh, far too much acreage. Control over the game. So it is. Blake Harper, the captain of the Clarence Football Club, comes in, drives it in towards the goals. It's a little bit offline, but oh my goodness, there standing tall is Sproul. Sproul wastes no time and he spins around and drives that one through for a goal. I there it is now. That was a good tackle. Stay there. out, stay out. Yeah, it was a great tackle, good pressure, and that's exactly what Lord are going to need to uh, get a score on the board and have more opportunity in this game. So Beakley, deliberate shot on goal. Goes towards the sticks. Oh, and he's put it through. The big man from Lauderdale, Austin Beakley. His dear old granddad, Tony Beakley, will be here. We'll have a mullet like that, so it's oh. definitely a... Um, yeah, it's a cracker. So mullet. Yeah, well, it's a beauty. I know uh, Harvey's just probably doing it to his dear old dad because he's follically challenged. So while he says, well, I've got the hair, I'm going to have a crack at growing it as it comes down to Cooney. And Cooney now just uh, wanders into the goals and puts it coming back inside. In goes uh, Williams, but he's dispossessed. And unfortunately for Lauderdale, uh, that promising attacking move has gone missing. As heard, we know he'll always turn and run and go on to his uh, left boot. Another handball out, dispossessed. Oh, this is very promising for Lord Dale. Blake Harper goes towards the goals, end over end, and he's put that one through for another goal for the Ruse. And uh, very much danger signs. We look here on the Mood Food replay. We see him pick up that ball, straighten up. It was a funny old kick there, Troy. Instead of the traditional drop, drop punt, maybe he would it at half time after time. Absolutely. So picking that one up was Ether dispossessed, and that's terrific work there. Well played by. Uh... We've journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets, and pioneered new ways of doing things, so we could craft 
the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. At the heart of Cripps are baking and community. We're proud of where we've come from, but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Cripps, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. Delicious in every way. Loving the taste, love it homemade. Their own recipes, freshly baked. Mm-mm, Brighton's best bake house. Love that homemade taste. In today's world of self-service, it's nice to know that there's still a place where you can sit back and relax. Bennett's Driveway Service, now at Snug, Lerner Valley and Sandy Bay. For more than 40 years, Bennett's Petroleum has been there for all Tasmanians. We've journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets, and pioneered new ways of doing things. So we could craft the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. At the heart of Cripps are baking and community. We're proud of where we've come from, but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Cripps, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. Welcome back here to North Hobart Oval. So we've had our uh, break, we've had time to reflect. And I'm going to go straight to super coach Troy Bennett. Troy, you were down there in the Lauderdale rooms. What are you telling your players? Well, he was very measured, Josh, and uh, he didn't actually uh, get frustrated or angry. He, he, uh, he said, keep with the method, keep with the system a little bit faster through the midfield, and I think that was the right thing to say. Oh, very much so. No, we, we were speaking off camera. He's a lovely young fella. Is Josh Williams, of course, plays in the, the State League, so his uh, attention to detail is meticulous, and obviously last week he had a very, very good victory over the uh, highly fancied uh, Sandy Bay, so uh, he's a, a coach to watch as here is Carter Roach. I think there's been a has there been a penalty? I think there has here, Tom. What's happened here? Is it 50? Yeah, I think there's been a 50 metre penalty, but I think that some of the players will be confused here. Okay, so Lauderdale take advantage of it. They butcher that kick that comes inside the 50, which gives a chance for Gapen to mop that one up as he goes back around the corner and finds Harper. Harper. Now across to Cooney. Cooney goes back inside. The foot skill so far of Clarence has been at a very high level. They've um, looked up, not snapped in very quickly, and tried to find one of their teammates as Lee Song now gets that ball and within one minute has put that one through. So a nice goal there to Charlie Lee Song as we'll have a look at that again on the mood food replay but um, this is almost a replica Troy of the opening of the first quarter so when the ball does drop there is players on their own yep yep uh, Lord it all, aren't running towards the contest nowhere near as much as they should be therefore Clarence players are all in this in the free space so not only it's doing two two things the the defenders are maybe playing that metre separation but it's the the fast 
uh, two-way running of the midfield. Mm. So they're coming down, creating uh, um, some where where they can go as we here uh, go again. It is uh, Sproul gets it back inside towards Richards. Richards again uh, is putting a fair amount of pressure on the Lauderdale defenders. Just sort of swinging around. Uh, couldn't come up with the kick that time, Blake Harper. But he goes in again, gets the handball over, and here's a chance as they drive the towards the goals with Preswell. Good defensive work there by Lauderdale. They are hanging on. It's almost, uh, Tom, that Lauderdale have just gone to the cliff. They've been pushed over, and they're hanging on by their fingernails. Just hanging on. Yeah, well, I think their goal now, if, if they think the game is over, they're going to want to make it at least entertaining or at least... Uh, competitive absolutely and the way they're gonna do that is through pressure and uh, when they do get it they're gonna have to move the ball pretty quickly yeah I agree with you there so it is Fletcher Richards who's going back now he is a fair way out but we've seen from his previous kicks that this distance shouldn't worry him as he comes in very deliberately he just goes to the left hand side as there's plenty of clearance and Cooney front and center and that's another very very nice goal to Daniel Cooney. Um, he's a crafty small forward on baller. He's shown us that he can get set shots and that's his second goal, Troy, from being in the right spot as we see here on the Mood Food replay. Yes, he was front and centre, I believe, and um, perfect positioning for a small forward pocket. Perfect front and centre snap. Uh, it's a 101 forward pocket play. Very much so. So well played by Daniel Cooney and Clarence as we check Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, which uh, for Lauderdale isn't great viewing because it shows that Clarence are 9 14 68 to Lauderdale 1 1 7. So we are in the uh, third quarter of the under 15 grand final. It is Williams who's trying very, very hard. He's had a pretty good game actually for Lauderdale hanging on a little bit too much maybe because they're getting their hands on the ball Tom they're being a little bit player focused on Lauderdale as that again is a ripping lead and uh, it is honoured and the mark has been taken by I think that might be uh, Williams uh, yeah. Williamson again well Clarence uh, Clarence are really moving the ball quickly um, through hand and by foot and I think Lord, they are just too focused on the player, as you said, and should, the way they've got to play hard footy is just by running through it and beelining the ball. Absolutely. So Ethan Williamson has uh, slipped that through for another goal for him. But if I'm the coach of Clarence, I just love the way they led for the ball with great intent. And the other thing that they did, Troy, was leave good space for their forwards to lead into yeah look they don't they don't clog up the corridor they lead out wide they lead forward and they lead, leave the full forward to that leading lane and and yeah. then their four pockets there that be front center or back and center is it's a again 101 forward play and uh matthew gaten has got him playing so well certainly has so it is now clarence through the agency of mcgann goes in there waterdale charge out at the ball that was crow stover runs at that particular time here is uh, clarence that's taken a little bit too high and even looking down on our laptop the free kicks are favoring clarence but that's only one reason because they are the ones prepared to put their head over the onion it's a lovely mark taken by carter roach carter roach trying to lead from the front the skipper gets the ball laterally to that movement Coming out is uh, Ether. He's beaten to it that particular time by Valdez. And there'll be another boundary throw in. Just such a really, really good day here at North Hobart Oval. It was bright sunshine a few minutes ago. A little bit of cloud coverage now, but just absolutely wonderful conditions for everyone that has come down here to the hollow turf. Great amphitheatre. Doesn't need too many people. And uh, you would think that there is a super duper big uh, crowd. And that one, again has gone out of bounds so the boundary umpire just shaping this one up as great Lauderdale. camera angles here at duff tv oh gee whiz you've got that uh, in one tommy we've got uh, cameras everywhere we've uh, got the full coverage on that lot of note though troy it is absolutely fantastic isn't it to think this is the largest football competition in tasmania as you can see mm. that one comes in there as richards 
I'll get back to that in a minute. Richards has taken a mark. Richards, long raking kick, but just gone offline. But it is fantastic for the kids on two counts. They've got the capacity to watch this game, have it promoted, and for our, our valued partners, Cripps the Master Baker, Bennett's Petroleum, Mood Food, and Brighton's Best Bakehouse, we can promote those fantastic businesses that help out junior footy, but also as a coaching tool oh, the, for, for coaches to go back and show the footage. We use video analysis often down at Sandy Bay and um, that's been a, a really important tool for players to gain confidence and know what, what where to run to and, and, and be accountable for what they did do and what they haven't didn't do on the game day. Okay, so that ball comes out towards uh, Hurd. Hurd snaps that one over but just misses. And the other thing which I found interesting, Tom, my I got two, I'll say, young blokes. One's now 27 and 25, and especially Henry, the 25-year-old. I know he might be watching up there on the Gold Coast. Uh, at a, I think it was a birthday party when he was about 18. He got the under-8s videos out, and they were stirring each other about the bob haircuts and uh, what they used to look like and say, so you, you've got that there forever. Yeah, well, I know at school when boys kind of get a boring subject like so oh. maths, we might we might go back and uh, go back to the ar archives and watch a few under eights games. Ah, uh, well, that's great to know. So there is Harvey Hurd going back. Apparently, I know there's a lot spent on that too. He is sponsored by Schwarzkopf, <laughs> and here goes Harvey, the old champ. He's a beautiful left foot kick. Arches that one around and he goes long and strong towards the goals and it's just touched on the line. So they've obviously thrown the magnets around a little bit as well, Troy, in that unless Hurd's just moved down on his player, but he was playing across half back. He's, he's that player that likes to get free and he uses the ball pretty well, yeah, doesn't he? He's got typical left foot player, um, likes to kick rather than handball and... Uh, and uh, off the half back or half forward, they're always dangerous left footers. Very much so. You can see that's a play for Lauderdale that comes back inside, dispossessed as Klein had his head over the footy, comes out the back. Here is Clarence, get the quick handball, well played by Gill. Back through the central area again, big spoil. Clarence, as always, got plenty of numbers at the bottom. It was uh, Gapen who ended up with it, trying to get it out. Here's an area of danger, well played by. Carter Roach just bombing that ball out and that's been the challenge I suppose because every time it does go down there it's going down so often but here is a chance for uh, Henderson getting that ball down oh there was a big chance for uh, Beakley couldn't get it but we know he was going to tackle a quick snap by uh, Bennett towards the goal which way is it going to bounce it bounces the other way and uh, through for the minor score so just a chance there Tom for Austin Beakley and he just wasn't quite up to the chance but he still does look dangerous when the ball gets inside the 50. Yeah well I think he's been weighing down forward without the ball for a while maybe got cold hands there <laughs> yeah. but uh, they're probably going need to need to get it down down there a bit more for him. Mm, yeah that's maybe the one move um, he's a good cut of a lad mm. as you mentioned Troy so maybe just get him on the ball give him a bit of a run round I reckon. Yeah definitely you need to get get your um, prime movers in the middle um, earlier than later. I agree. So it is Clarence with a very comfortable lead at this particular stage in the grand final. There's never a chance to go easy, but maybe I reckon if I had my coach's hat and it's uh, 10, nearly 11 minutes into the third quarter and I had this lead, Troy Bennett, I would be breathing a little bit easier. Well, I'd say so. I think he's probably sitting down there. He wouldn't have his pulse would be about 80, 80 beats per minute, I'd say, or 65 even, rather than 150. <laughs> it does beat a bit fast when you do have the, the old magnets in front of you and you're watching every bump and you're telling your players or imploring your players what to do. You, you are playing on uh, always mentally and physically mm. absolutely exhausted after a game as there goes... Seaborn at the back, defeated that particular time by Creswell who gets it in for Clarence there. Look at him running back in the numbers there, hunting as it comes to Hurd. Hurd snaps that one through and he's uh, done a very, very nice job as Harvey Hurd. I think the only question to be asked of Harvey Hurd, who is the best Hurd? He's got two other brothers and I reckon he's making his stake to say to his brothers, it's the old kid as he takes possession of the ball here. He just waited on the outside rather cleverly 
and he thought that uh, that ball would spill and Harvey Heard has uh, snuck that one through for a goal. So there is the scoreboard, the Brighton Best Bakehouse scoreboard. It is Clarence 11 17 83 to Lauderdale 1 2 8. As Clarence now going forward again, Williams runs backwards uh, to get that ball. Done a very, very nice job so far. There is McGann. McGann picks it up, goes very, very wide on that particular occasion. And again, it will be another throw in. See over there, there are the parents the of young Tate Carter Roach. They'll be watching on and urging their son to get his players up and about. And I guess the reality is now, Troy, you need to be truthful with your players sometimes too. So it mm. might be that coach um, Josh Williams might say to his boys, the reality is, fellas, we've made it to the grand final and the game is gone. Mm -hmm. What can we take out? What learning experience do we want to take out of the game? So there's still a lot to play for. There's a lot to learn still. And, and, it, and this is where, as a coach, you have to be measured and calm so you can actually learn from the next 30 minutes. Otherwise, it's um, 30 minutes wasted. Absolutely. So there was another goal for... Clarence, as we'll have a look at that one on the Mood Food replay while you and I were reflecting on what Lauderdale were thinking. As we see here, it was a, a good handball out and it came down towards Blake Harper, who uh, is always creative when he gets the ball, Tom, and he has put that through for his second goal. Yeah, well, Blake's really starting to uh, get a rhythm on now. He's moving at the ball with pace and he's having a really good game now. So it is Clarence. They are 12 17 Back. 89 to Lauderdale 1 2 8. Here in the, the under 15 2021 Six. grand final in the Crips the Master Baker STJFL competition. It is the last day of grand final. We've got one more in the under 18 division as that ball came in very, very quickly. And it is Clarence through the agency of Ethan Williams. And uh, I think this young fellow, yeah, like boys, many of these footballers, has got a bright you. future. He uh, looks very, very likely. And as soon as it gets within his vicinity, he makes that ball his own. In comes Williamson. And that's a lovely kick. It uh, just started it slightly towards the left, drifted back across. And he has put that one through, excuse me, for his third goal. And uh, here we see on the Mood Food replay, he just comes in here. He just almost uh, for Volaresque, uh, just starting it on that left-hand side, and it's coming back to the right. So he knows his own kicking style. So that's the third goal for Ethan Williamson here in the under-15 2021 grand final at North Hobart Oval. So Clarence at the moment are doing everything right, making every post a winner as Lauderdale are trying to hang on and stay in this game. They've done a great job to get to this grand final. They maybe last week's game, Troy against uh, Sandy Bay, which is an absolute belter, has taken a fair bit of energy out of their sails. Look, um, energy is, uh, is the major key word there. Energy is everything in football and life. And um, if you've expelled it, no, expended it, then it's uh, you need to try to get it back, and I say that Lauderdale threw everything at the game last week, which they did, and I reckon they um, probably didn't get enough sleep during the week. Yeah, I was very excited. I know they trained very, very hard down there mm. at uh, Lauderdale in readiness for this uh, big game. As Williams gets a nice kick out here to Suris. Suris goes back inside looking for Williams. Didn't quite find his mark. Goes back in to try and get it again. I like the way that young Benjamin Williams has just never given up. But here again, it is Harper. Harper drives it towards the full forward area. And that is a cracker of a mark by Ethan Williamson again. Tom, he had no right to mark this ball, as we saw there on the Mood Food replay. It appeared that that ball had actually gone behind him. And he just sort of arched his back and put the big dukes up and he has slotted it through 
for his fourth goal. Well, they really made the scoreboard look a lot more respectable Ooh, now for Clarence. Yeah. They've fixed up their uh, goal to behinds ratio, and Ethan Williamson's starting to he's starting to get a bag going on now. Yeah, have a look at that. So that was a tremendous mark. Beautiful play there by Clarence. And uh, we just checked the Brighton's best bakehouse score, and you're very right. It uh, is now 14 goals, 17, 101 to Lauderdale, 1, 2, 8. It is uh, getting close to the end of this third quarter. It is a little bit of a procession at the moment. And as soon as Clarence get the ball, they are really getting on their bike and running forward of it as that one has hit the post. You can see in coaching parlours, Troy, as soon as the ball is thrown up, Clarence are just on their bike running forward to the ball now. There's the expectation they're going to take possession. They are expecting it predictable moving forward. And again, the only way to beat that is to stop, be on man up and stop your play from running. Yeah, just, just arm across. Way. And yep. here is a quick snap in there by Cooney. Can't quite bring it back far enough. And again, uh, that one just goes through for a minor score. But it's a, it's a team collective that has to do it, not one or two or four or five individuals. It's just 18 on the ground that have to do it at one time. Absolutely. So here is Benjamin Williams. Goes that low pass. It's a lovely kick. And he finds up uh, Lagos. Lagos further afield to Seaborn. So they've done a good job to get it out this far. Now they decide to look laterally to... Williams, Williams now gets it in the hands of a, a running player. Here's a big chance. I think that was Goss, but it's spoiled. And it's uh, a credit to Clarence to see that their defenders are still working really hard. They could almost sometimes switch off if the ball hasn't gone down there, but they are really staying true to the cause as that one comes in. But a nice play there by Legos as well. He is very, very much in the firing line because that ball has come in repeat entry after repeat entry and there's a really strong tackle by Seth Goss and Goss will take the free kick. Clarence are just they're just running before they've even got the ball so they're, they're backing their teammates to take disposal and give the quick hands out. Very unselfish uh, play from Clarence. It's been a great game. Well you can see there as soon as they got that one they just arched the back, took the game on and uh, on that particular occasion, it went a little bit wide. And so it was through for the minor score. So here go Lauderdale, trying to get themselves back into this game. To, as we've said, unfortunately for them, they cannot win this game. That's the truth of it, not from this position, but they can certainly add a bit of pride to their performance. They've done a great job and hats off to them. And they just... Don't want to give it away in this stage. They want to stay true to what they've done all season as that ball is kicked in nicely by Johnston. But um, I'm just waiting for confirmation. They said no, no score. So it is Clarence, 14-19, 103. Comfortable lead uh, over Lauderdale, one 2 eight. For Clarence, we have uh, Daniel Cooney with three goals, two to Blake Harper. Singles to Sylvester, Richards, Hurd and Sproul. And it is uh, Williamson who's been very, very dangerous with four goals. So it is all Clarence here so far in the grand final, Troy Bennett. Well, it was always on the cards, given Clarence's depth and skill. And um, Lauderdale had to do something special today. And they unfortunately didn't bring that something special early enough to the game. Yeah, it really set the tone early, didn't it, when indeed they had to be man up and they had to put that uh, enormous amounts of pressure. And when Clarence got those uh, couple of uh, easy goals, that might have set the tone. They did a good job to try and get back in it. They looked dangerous when Beakley went forward, but it, they've been starved of opportunity. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our last break here from the North Hobart Oval. And when we return, we'll bring you the uh, all the action in the uh, grand final for the under 15 division. We've journeyed over the seas, expanded city streets, and pioneered new ways of doing things. So we could craft the greatest loaf of bread for all Tasmanians to taste. 
At the heart of Cripps are baking and community. We're proud of where we've come from, but we're even more excited about where we're headed. Cripps, baking for Tasmanians since 1878. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to North Hobart Oval for the under-15 division in the STJFL, the grand final. It's been an absolute stellar season for the league with uh, an increase in numbers in both boys and girls. So uh, we had just on uh, 4,000 competitors, by far the biggest football competition in Tasmania and it all boils down to this for the under 15 division we've had a couple of wonderfully close grand finals this one we have to say hats off to Clarence who have been good that's a really good tackle there by Carter Roach who's mowed down excuse me Oscar Sproul and that's a really really nice play as Lauderdale trying to set up an assault Me. on the goals Back up through the middle. Just looking to go now. Small kick back through the middle, and here is Beakley. The challenge for this particular, this next kick, it needs to go to himself, but he's taken the ball in the centre, so we need someone else to stand tall. And here is a chance as it comes out wide towards Bailey. The big fella, Bailey, goes towards the goal. And Bailey has put that one through for a six-pointer. That's the sort of spirit you want to show, Troy. Well, that's exactly what you want, and that, uh, that, that will give him something to, uh, to fight for for the next 19 minutes. So hopefully they can get a few more on the board and, um, and feel good about themselves. He's a good cut of a lad, Tom, as well, young Jack Bailey. Yeah, he's a, he's a great build, really athletic. Um, well, I think even there... Uh, Lord, I just need a bit more confidence. Like he got the ball, had an open shot at goal, and didn't back himself. But it was a great kick in the end. But Lord, I just need a bit more confidence and rally yep. off that just to keep pushing forward uh, and make the scoreboard a bit more respectable again. So it was nice work there by Jack Bailey. But as you said, once you get the footy, don't oh. doubt it. Don't think, just do and uh, take off as Clarence have done here as they set sail towards the goals. And you know what uh, good teams do? They respond when a question is asked of them and they put that one through for a goal. 
So as we have another look at that one on the Mood Food replay, what a quick response that was, Tom Dennett. Yeah, really quick response. They uh, saw saw where they went wrong and just uh, blast them out the midfield. Just destroyed it. So I think that was, was that Fletcher Richards? That's right. It yep. was Fletcher. He was there on the outside when he received that ball and he put that one through for his second. So very, very entertaining start to this last quarter with uh, two minutes gone. We have two goals, one to Lauderdale and one indeed to uh, Clarence. Here is uh, Lee Song. Lee Song switches that one around. Out comes Blake Harper. It was knocked out. It was Creswell who was dispossessed. Nicely played you there, teaming that up very, very nicely as uh, Gapen goes inside looking towards Hurd. You know he's going to either go on his left or very, very effectively go the handball. It is Harper who steadied but only goes as far as Randuns for Lauderdale who did a really good job to block, uh, block that one as it came back in towards the hole. You can see it is in dispute. Well played by uh, Oates. Coming back with interest as it snapped towards the goal, but uh, just goes off the side and through for the minor score. So a very good start here for the last quarter. One goal apiece. So we are got about 16 and a half minutes left in the under 15 well. STJFL season. Yay. And we did mention, Tom, about last week's game. It was very, very taxing for um, Lauderdale and Sandy Bay. It was uh, a brutal contest. Do you, would you think that uh, that was probably Lauderdale's grand final to get to the big dance? Uh, well, the energy they brought right. from the first jump that game really did show that they, they really wanted to make the grand final, whether it was just for the thrill of playing or the, the fact that they thought they had a chance. But mm -hmm. I think the way they played last week, you can make the statement that that was their grand final. Well, it's sometimes hard to get up week after week after week, so yeah. they've done a tremendous job to get there, and I think uh, the umpire has said you've gone over the mark, and it is a extra distance penalty coming in here, so that's exactly what Lauderdale don't need to do. So that ball will um, now come back to Oscar Sproul, and Sproul decides to go the short, and Cooney is there. Cooney just waltzes in. It's almost like Cooney, he's not that small, is he, uh, Troy, that he can hide under a blade of grass, but uh, he was left well and truly alone. He's and, been alone uh, all day. He's been alone all day, unfortunately. He has. That's yep. his fourth goal. Mm -hmm. So he's shown in the set shots, but he's got front and centre, and in this one, they had two or three different options to go to there. Yeah, look, um, it's, it's, it's definitely a mindset, mm. and um, you need to... Um, when you're a player, you need to not fear the fact that you may get beaten. You need to be confident enough to man up and get on your player and contest. No doubt about that. So, nice play by Clarence. So, uh, they move on and are doing a very, very good job. I'm sure the Eastern Shore Powerhouse Club will be licking their lips to think of all these young men who potentially could be playing senior football in a couple of years' time as Lee Song goes back and just puts that one because for me Troy that's the fascinating thing when you watch boys around this uh, sort of age group they're only a couple of years away from potentially playing in senior company they are and, and, and mindset manages the emotion which manages the action and um, it's that's it's the mental game AFL football as much as anything else in life so it's just got to be hang tough. OK, and that was a good, tough tackle there by Lauderdale. Here they are trying to move it so quickly. Caught a little bit behind that time was uh, Forrest. And Clarence was able to mark that one. No, leading out. Terrific work there. Here is McGann. Gets those quick hands. And have a look at them quickly get on their bike. It's Oscar Sproul who goes deep in towards Hurd. Hurd might even shepherd that one. Indeed, I think... He said if it's gone through for a goal, mm. we're going to pay that one. I reckon if it wasn't going to be a goal, Hi, how are you? Harvey Heard was going to uh, get that tick. I don't think old Harvey would be too thrilled that it uh, didn't go to him. <laughs> and I think that was, was that Sylvester? Let's have a look Oscar at the mood. Sproul, I think Sproul, it was. Was it? Yes. Anyway, here is the mood food replay as we watch it. 
Look at that. As soon as Clarence have taken possession of it, indeed, it was Oscar Sproul. Lovely kick to the hot zone. And uh, because of the lead that Heard provided, it uh, made the space out the back there. And uh, that ball has gone through for another goal to Clarence. So we'll just check on the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, which reads um, Clarence 17-21-123 to Lauderdale, 2-2-14. Two, two, Here he goes, Lauderdale. They get it to their half forward flank. I think there was a high tackle there. And Clarence is going to take that one on the half back flank. Clarence building a very respectable um, spread of uh, goal scorers. There's been about uh, eight odd goal scorers now, so they're spreading the load a bit. They certainly are, and that was good play by Aziz down back who charged at the ball, left his man, as that one comes towards Williams, who dived uh, for it, couldn't quite bring it in, comes out towards Lee Song, then Cooney, in dispute, good tackle there by the Bombers. Now it is McGann who goes forward. It goes now to Carter Roach. He was under the pump always because that was never going to be called to be playing the difference. In goes McGann again, and it's like the big gang tackle I'm not sure which fella's going to take the free kick. It was going to be one of three, and I think it's going to go to Henderson. Here is Henderson now. Good tackling pressure from Lauderdale, but there's just they're having enough of the football, and that's why they're probably winning the tackle count. I think you're right, as would be the case there, and a bit of frustration by Kobe Bennett just kicking that one back as Oscar Sproul went high for that particular mark. Couldn't quite bring that one in, and it's going to be another boundary throw in but as you've alluded to Troy that the very even uh, Clarence all the way across um, from the rucking midfield division down back and through the fours they've got just option after option as Sproul picks the ball up runs it and it's here this is the sort of difference you see as soon as the ball mm. hits the ground there's not one player making the tackle there's a number of players playing the tackle as Hurd picks that mm. one up and Hurd swings it around and Harvey Hurd has now kicked his second goal so he's enjoying his dalliance down forward as well. Look, um, Clarence move and move and they run and run all day and for 80 minutes and, um, and they get rewarded for that run and they um, acknowledge each other for that run and they share the ball. Therefore, you run because you will get the ball because they, they're, they're a very unselfish side. They are unselfish side, and uh, again, I say congratulations to to Cat and the coaching staff. They play in the, the the proper sense of it, don't they? So they always get their eyes up. It's not about me; it's about we. Mm -hmm. No, very much so. And and they um they share the ball, like I said, so well. And it's, it's a credit to the team and the coaching. Okay, so one out here by Lauderdale. Here goes Henderson. Long kick forward, it comes over the back. They've got a big chance as Bennett gets on his bike. It just travels a little bit too far. He tries to bring it back to the area of danger. Can they get a goal here, the old bombers? As mopping that one up is Massey. Massey goes as far as Carter Roach, who's moved down forward a bit. A bit of uh, indecision here because it's a big punch out, but Lord, uh, sorry, Clarence are able to mop that one up. It comes out now. Here is Bailey. He picks it up, spins out of trouble. Just knocks the ball forward, valuable meterage. Sylvester picks that one up and uh, he goes down looking for Hurd. Overruns it on that one. There are plenty of different options. Valdez gets the handball oh, further afield. As you can hear, I think that was uh, Maxi Gapen who overrun that particular time. A bit of a bump off the ball. So Clarence getting it right towards the goal, but good defensive play here by the Bombers. There's the old fashioned bomb trying to grab meterage. It is Williams. Williams. Nice drop punt, looking towards Beakley. Beakley taps it on in front, tries to keep it in, go and get it again, he does so. Well done by Austin Beakley. Aziz gets it, only goes as far as Forrest. Up over the back, here is Clarence under the first time under, under the pump. Strong tackle on Massey. Uh, I think it was a slinging motion, and that's the reason why he got the free kick. Gee, that's uh, a discipline there, Tom, by the defensive work from Clarence. It hasn't been down there enormous amounts of times, but didn't they stay switched on? Yeah, well, they're not losing any discipline at all, as you said. 
uh, but they've really switched around their team as well. They've put their forwards to backs and backs to forwards and forwards to mids. So they've, they've given everyone a go, Clarence, but they're a very deep team and everyone's able to do their role. Well, the good thing about that, uh, Troy Bennett, is it sets them up for another good season next year because it exposes the players to different positions. Uh, that's right. Yes, uh, look, it's, it's, it's a great uh, way to... Uh, to develop players is going through every line mm. um, through the roster season and through the grand final. So, again, they're just going to be more con have more confidence and have a lot more will and a lot more understanding of the game because of it. Very much so. So, for all the teams in the under 15 division, Clarence today have obviously shown and flexed their muscle and shown their superiority. So, uh, all is in front. I'm sure Lauderdale will be much, much better for the learning experience as well all the other teams to see what's in front that just means you have to get out there and start training as of next week <laughs> no give no uh, sense of break at all maybe give yourself a week or two off and then straight into it as Sethi Goss is uh, fighting hard here comes Klein tries to get a valuable meter or two it is Giles who's back there who's also just mopped that one up Clarence with that uh, give and go as uh, Richards runs into a little bit of trouble and nicely mopped up by Lauderdale across cross back but that kick has been intercepted by Sylvester Sylvester drives it towards full forward there is Cooney at the back line well he's done everything else he's been a set shot kicker he's been on the angle kicker he's been front and centre I suppose he may as well try and get one from over the top and have a mark just to to get the Quinella, he's kicked four goals and been a very, very effective player for the Clarence Football Club here in the uh, grand final in the under-15 division. So the kick in. It is back round the centre of the ground. There is Souris fighting hard for Lauderdale, held in the tackle, goes back down and... A lovely mark taken here by Legos, and I've liked the way he's played, mm. Troy. I like, I like his. Um, I must admit, I was looking at him before we played them last week, and a player and we needed to watch, and he's really shown a lot of uh, maturity today and a lot of skill. He certainly has. Well, the ball has been down there quite a bit, and uh, he's got a little bit of it as McGann. He spills that one, but he just shows great composure to take his time to bend over and get the next one. Up they go. Couldn't quite uh, bring that one in. Good handball there by Sylvester. Again, he's getting plenty of options for the ball. It is Gill. Gill picks it up, but as soon as he has, he has been uh, dispossessed. Harper now. Harper's going to drive it back in towards the, the 50. Good spoil by Williams. Standing tall and resolute is the defensive area of the Bombers now. They are under the pump as it was uh, Johnston who take possession. And uh, they are surging again now, are uh, Clarence, but yes, they indeed, they have got that free kick. Clarence haven't slowed down at all, even though they know that the game's over. They're still not slowing down, whereas I think Lauder have dropped their heads a little bit, but Clarence won't give in until they've... There oh. well, there is Hurd, I think, has got that one, has he, Tom? Yep, Harvey Hurd's kicked that one off the ground. as a ripper goal for, to finish off his... What is that, three goal yeah. bag now? He has got the three goals. We'll have a look at this on the Mood Food replay. As the ball was in dispute, and I know how he got that goal because he's a very passionate EPL supporter. He'll be thinking he'd be watching his Burnley boys go round and he's probably thought to himself, I'll show that EPL prowess. And he's kicked that one through. So well done there to uh, Harvey Hurd, who's put it through for his third goal. So... 16 minutes gone in the 2021 Grand Final. It is Clarence, 19-22-136 to Lauderdale, 2-2-14. Ball now, again, comes out towards Harper, taken high here by Carter Roach. He hits the hands up, he said, I didn't really mean to do that. Let's hope the young fella's all right. So it is. Blake Harper, who's had a stellar game, and that's good to see as Tate Carter coach has come over and said, look, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to, but it was a high tackle. So it is Blake Harper who's going to go back and uh, have a set shot for goal. 
Just lining this one up. Coming in directly at the big sticks. Left foot up. Leans back slightly, but the umpire says that'll do me. Thank you very much as it goes straight over the top and through for a very, very nice goal. And that is indeed his third goal as well. So plenty of goal scorers as uh, Blake Harper has put that one through. So here we see on the Mood Food replay, just came in a very, very efficient uh, kick for goal there, Tom. Yeah, very. I think he... I'm sure he's a right footer at heart, I think I remember, but he might have just went on his left foot there just for a finishing touch, but he's had a great game, Blake. He certainly has. So now, ball back in the middle, tapped out by White and for Clarence. They've got so many options, and here is a chance, just taking their eye off the ball slightly was Henderson. Henderson, uh, now it comes, it's Lee Song, goes out wide. Why wouldn't you? There's plenty of running options. Just coming back around now, trying to find up the leads. Goes towards Sproul. Sproul dispossesses that ball and it spills towards Gill. Gill now goes quickly. They are relentless and they are just coming at Lauderdale in waves since that one has gone across the line. Uh, before Sylvester can pull that one back. So it'll be another boundary throw and it is inside the forward 54 Clarence. And they have got uh, a very, very, well, we won't say comfortably, this is unassailable and they have played such a wonderful game. They've bought their best game for the last game, which is the grand final. And that one, again, has gone out of bounds. So it'll be another boundary throw in. Still the crowd is building because we have one more game after this one in the uh, under 16 and uh, half division. Ball now spills out, trying to get their heads over the ball. That was uh, Massey and uh, also Lee Song. Good tackling there by Lauderdale with that never, never give up attitude. But it has uh, formed yet another stoppage. I think uh, it'll be Bailey up against Whiten. Whiten gets that big, strong tap as Se Seaborn quick snap out towards the uh, boundary line. And we're just going through the throws and the death knell of these last pieces of play here, Tom. But it's been a very, very polished performance from Clarence. Oh, Clarence have really showed out today. They've played some outstanding football. Lord Al fought hard. They pressured well did as much as they could, but Clarence were just in a uh, league of their own today. They certainly are, as that uh, handball uh, came out. It was uh, Ollie Hill who got a couple of touches in and under there, but it now comes back to Williams. Williams, nice kick, spreading the ball. This is good set up by the Bombers, but it's all too late as they get the last kick of the day. And as we check Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, which reads Clarence 20, 22, 142 to Lauderdale, 2, 2, 14 for the victors. Let's go through here. It's Daniel Cooney got four, Blake Harper three, Sylvester one, Richards two, Harvey Hurd three, Lee Song one, Williamson four, Sproul two and four, Lauderdale, Bailey and uh, Beakley. But Troy Bennett, a wonderful performance and hats off to uh, the Clarence Football Club. Look, Clarence have been um, the, lead, the, lead, the lead team for in this age group for six years and um, we um, all the teams are better because of Clarence's quality and we all try to catch them and play um, and, and, and beat them and, and, the, and the competition is better because of it. Well, we thank you, Troy Bennett and Tom Bennett, for your expert uh, commentary. Uh, without that coverage, it wouldn't be quite the same. And it's great to have an insight uh, into this division. So we thank you. It is uh, Andrew Silver Fox Hopwood. I'll sign off now as we will go down to the presentations of the Cup to the Clarence Football Club.
Good afternoon patrons and welcome to the Crips STJ AFL Grand Final Day. Congratulations to the Clarence boys on winning the under 15 boys premiership. Commiserations to the Lauderdale boys, you put up a great fight throughout the uh, roster season and the final series to get through to today's Grand Final. And please hold your heads high because you did your coach and your parent supporter group very proud. I'd now like to invite Mark Waddington, the STJFL umpires coordinator for the TFUA, to read out the umpires that have been appointed to a grand final today to receive their medallions. Um, congratulations to, uh, to both pods today for the, um, uh, making the grand final. Well done to Clarence and congratulations to, uh, to Lord um, Our umpires today, the culmination of their season, uh, field umpires Mark Holmes, James Burke and Ryan Borsberg. The emergency umpire Michael Thompson. Our boundary umpires Thomas Lawler and Oliver Morgan. And our goal umpires Charlie Doran and Mark Duffer. Congratulations on your years. Thanks Mark and once again a big thank you and well done to our umpires today. Now I'd like to invite the coach of Lauderdale, Josh Williams, to come forward and say a few words. Thank you, Gibbo. Thank you uh, to the STJFL and the umpires did a fantastic job today and all throughout the year. Uh, to Josh and the Lord and our boys, I know it might not feel as like you've uh, had a great year after today, but it was a sensational effort to get there. Certainly the most improved side um, throughout the year and you've done a great job to make the grand final, so congratulations. Uh, to our boys, um, the support I get to the coaches that help me out, uh, the girls and support staff, uh, all the families, I thank you very much. Uh, it's been a, a fantastic year to go unbeaten and uh, 
all our grand foreign aid has been nice to finish it off the way we wanted to. So congratulations to all my boys. Thank you everyone coming out and uh, well done. Enjoy the next few games. Thank you. Okay, start with you, Goosey Gill. Daniel Cooney. Cody White. Harry Sylvester. Ron Aziz. Ali Giles. Max Capen. Joey McGann. Uh, Josh Creswell. Uh, Owen Setchell. DJ Valdez. Will Massey. Ollie Hill. Fletcher Richards. Charles Mason. Ethan Williamson. Riley Johnston. Oscar Sproul. And Harvey Heard, Jack Bornwell, and the skipper, Blake Harper. What well numbers? And the coach, Matt Gaben. Our 2021 Crips STJ Bell under 15 boys premiers, Clarence. Once again, congratulations to our 2021 Under-15 Boys Premiers Clarence. It needs to go to himself, but he's taken the ball in the centre, so we need someone else to stand tall. And here is a chance as it comes out wide towards Bailey. The big fella, Bailey, goes towards the goal. And Bailey has put that one through for a six-pointer. That's the sort of spirit you want to show, Troy. Well, that's exactly what you want, and that, uh, that, that will give him something to, uh, to fight for for the next 19 minutes. So hopefully they can get a few more on the board. And, um, and free kick. Clarence haven't slowed down at all, even though they know that the game's over. They're still not slowing down, whereas I think Lauderdale have dropped their heads a little bit, but Clarence won't give in until they've... They're all... Well, there is Hurd, I think, has got that one, has he, Tom? Yep, Harvey Hurd's kicked that one off the ground as a ripper goal for to finish off his... Coming in directly at the big sticks. 
left foot up. Leans back slightly, but the umpire says that'll do me. Thank you very much as it goes straight over the top and through for a very, very nice goal. And that is indeed his third goal as well. So Williams, Williams, nice kick, spreading the ball. This is good set up by the Bombers, but it's all too late as they get the last kick of the day. And as we check Brighton's best Bakehouse scoreboard, which reads Clarence 20, 22, 142 to Lauderdale, 2, 2, 14 for the victors. Let's go through here. It's Daniel Cooney got four, Blake Harper three, Sylvester one, Richards two, Harvey Hurd three, Lee Song one, Williamson four, Sproul two and four, Mulladale, Bailey and uh, Beakley.